Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Business Innovators Radio. This is your host, Constant Taylor. Today, we have a very special guest on the show, and they're going to share some very exciting information with us. So, if you're looking to increase your personal and professional effectiveness in the workplace, then you've come to the right place. Our special guest today is Sandy Giroux. Sandy has been speaking professionally for over 16 years, and the content that she speaks on is turning your workplace into a wow place. She does leadership and service, and she also connects with customers to to understand the full life cycle of the WOW experience. Sandy has spoken both nationally and internationally, and she's based out of Florida, Orlando, by the way. She has a book out called Turn Your Workplace into a WOW Place. Sandy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Constant. I'm so happy to be here. And we're so excited to have you. Now, I'd like to start the show by asking you if you could share with the listeners, what, how do you help your customers and what subjects do you, do you talk to them about? Okay. Uh, yeah, well, the subjects that I talk to them about, you know, you mentioned my branding, Turn Your Workplace into a Wow Place. And the subjects I talk about really are leadership and service. They're so intertwined with each other, you just can't separate them. But it's also about engaging with each other so that you raise the level of your productivity, raise the level of engagement, and that will connect your people so strongly to you and the company and to the customers that that raises the level of service. And in fact, um, I always tell people that I need to describe or explain what is a workplace and what is a wow place. So my definition of each is as follows. A workplace is a place where employees have to go because they make a paycheck. You know? <laughs> but a wow place is a place where people, not just nameless, faceless employees, but people love to go because they know they make a difference. And that really describes it all because we spend way too many hours in our workplaces every single day, five, six, seven days a week sometimes, to feel as though what we do doesn't matter, doesn't help anybody, it doesn't make any difference at all in the world. So so I help people connect on a more human and deep level so that leaders can help their people understand how they make a difference to not only themselves, but their customers, the leader, the organization, and you feel good about what you're doing instead of going home demotivated and and drudging every night saying, oh man, I don't want to go back in the morning. You know, I want them excited and hopping and ready to go because they know they're, they're doing some incredible things. So that's what I do. Well, what are the components of actually turning a workplace into a wild place? What, what I find is that they, each company has its own DNA and to change the DNA in some companies is very challenging. Yeah, and it is. Uh, very often, especially in a large organization, people feel it's almost impossible to do that. But all I say is, you know what? One step at a time, one leader at a time, one team at a time, you can start to change it. Because what I find is when you start creating wow experiences in one area, that filters over into the next area. And someone else sees, oh, my goodness, look what they're doing. We could do something like that, you know. And, and it doesn't have to be, oh, we've got to change the whole organization at once. You'll never do that. So I just say start small. Look at every department as a little mini organization. How can I make, as a leader, my team more productive, my team more engaged and and more effective in what they're doing. And how can I feel better about what I'm doing? How can I help them grow? And then that just spreads. And, And I help people do that by focusing on what I call the wow place rules. Okay. There are five rules that people really need to think about in order to create wow experiences. And I'll just list them quickly. So you see all five, they're in the book. But wow place rule number one is that a wow place is safe. 
Now, I don't mean OSHA safe. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, because everybody thinks safe. You know, well, we got all the safety procedures. And, no, no, no. This is emotionally safe for a leader to encourage their team to share, share good ideas, share processes that are broken, procedures that need to be fixed, customer complaints, because there's an opportunity buried in every customer complaint. And, and how do you fix that? So we need to make the workplace safe so people feel good and safe about contributing their ideas. You know, um, I don't, you, you've probably heard, I'm, I'm sure, a lot of people think that knowledge is power. And, um, and if I share my knowledge with someone else, I lose power because, well, now everybody else knows what I know. Ugh. We have to stop that kind of thinking. We have to start thinking that sharing knowledge is power. I don't want to be known as one person who knows one great thing or did one thing one time. I want to be known as someone who helps educate and inspire and share things with the whole team so everybody is better. And I have to share my knowledge to do that. Do you um, have so, Do you have a specific yeah. case study, business case where you were actually able to transform an organization that was a workplace into an actual wild place? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. I do. My one of my biggest successes that I'm so excited about is. A company called me because they had an issue. It was mainly on the customer service team, but everybody was involved um, in the organization. And what happened was they had already lost their largest client because of customer service issues. They were about to lose their second largest client, who was worth $2 million a year. And uh, that's a big ouch. And if you think the second largest client was worth $2 million, you yeah. can't even imagine what the first largest was. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, so here's what we did. We brought the wild place rules in there to the customer service team. And first of all, everyone had to be on board. The leader, the GM of that location had to be on board. And he was very transparent about the fact that we have a problem at Houston. We have a problem. Um, and he told his team they already knew there was a problem. They didn't realize the magnitude of the problem. But by sharing it with them and telling them just how big it was and how much in dire straits they were, very often that can get an entire team committed to a level you would never expect. See, sometimes leaders try to hide there's an issue, you know, there's a problem, we're going to fix it, we're not going to tell our people. No, let your people help you. So that's what this GM did. Then what we did was we scheduled six weeks of customer service team training. Now, that's not six full weeks. That's two hours a week, one morning, because you can't take the whole entire customer service team offline for any length of time. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So what we did was we scheduled it from 8 to 10 every Wednesday morning for six weeks. And we started creating a forum for them to share and brainstorm, uh, for them to talk to me about what, what was it about their leaders that they felt the leaders could do better, all with the leader's blessing. Uh, and it was all anonymous so that nobody knew where the comments were coming from, but the leaders needed to hear what they had to do differently. They implemented all kinds of things uh, to help them physically do things like headsets so that if they, you know, they didn't have to be locked to their desk. So they could walk around. If the phone rang, they could get back to their desk and they could be answering it while they were getting back to their desk and their computer. Mm -hmm. um, but then what we did was all of the leadership and the customer service stuff in the wild place. We started sharing. They made it safe for them to share. They showed respect to the team by asking for their input and then actually taking it. That's another thing. A wild place is respectful. Mm -hmm. A lot of times... People will share, and then where, where does the idea go? It goes into a black hole somewhere. Nobody's listening to me. Nobody cares what I have to say, and nothing ever changes. Uh -huh. So this team changed. And by implementing the rules and having the brainstorming sessions and having those, how do we fix this? What's the next problem we have to do? Working closely with the customer service manager and the team. turned everything around, but they saved that $2 million client. The client was so thrilled that they brought the customer service manager of that company out to their own convention the next year to say what they had done differently and how they had changed everything. And it, it impacted the entire organization so that they saved that client in six weeks' time. Wow. So, that's, that's a pretty awesome. We were thrilled. 
That's a pretty awesome story. Now, with thank you, I was so thrilled. <laughs> my, my my the other question that I had was, how do you engage the customer? And you kind of shared that uh, just a second ago there. But how do you typically bring the customer into the Wow workplace process? Uh, well, one of the biggest things that that I do is when we're working with leaders, we not only have the leaders um, start thinking about how do they communicate more effect- effectively, how do they show more respect, but then we have meetings with the team members as well. Now, sometimes it's I'll go in and I'll do a training, say, for the entire administrative professionals group. A lot of them are doing things on administrative professionals day, but Many of them are realizing that, wait a minute, this group is so big and so dynamic, they can't just have one day of training a year. They need a little bit more training and motivation than that. So they've actually started academies, um, universities, admin universities within their organizations, or even just sometimes an admin group where everyone can get together. So we get them all together across locations. So there's, you know, breaking down those silos letting the people from one department talk to the people in another department. In fact, here's another story. The administrative professional group of one uh, big healthcare uh, company in New York had not allowed the admins to get together across locations for quite a long time. When they finally did, the admins suddenly realized, wait a minute, we're buying our office supplies from all different vendors. And, you know, and you'd think that in this day and age, people, that, that's a given. You just, you know, negotiate something with one vendor. But uh-huh. sometimes the most obvious things are the ones that are missed. So your people are on the front lines. They get to talk to each other. They learn about it. Well, they put it out to bid. Pick the best one. And that admin group across all those locations saved their company half a million dollars in the first year alone. Incredible. Yeah. So it's just a matter of getting the teams together, break down those silos, let them talk to each other. So we talk to the leaders and help them communicate and relate better and be more human. And then we get the teams together. In fact, I'm developing something now I'm calling wow clubs because this concept has been so effective that I'm now creating an online form that they can get guided discussions. So that's coming out pretty soon, and I'm calling it a WOW Club, and they can start WOW Clubs in their organizations, which is the brainstorming forum. It's not just the static, goes-nowhere suggestion box or the black hole. This is actual live meetings they will hold with guided discussions from me online uh, or in whatever format they want to download. And if they wanted to, they could bring me in. But Basically, I want them to be able to have these because what happened at that company that saved the $2 million client, one great thing was that one of the customer service people, when the training was over, went to her manager and said they loved those brainstorming sessions and meetings so much because they could see the difference they're making. That they said to her, I want to be Sandy when Sandy leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so she wanted to guide the brainstorming sessions and they kept them up. Um, and, and it's funny because, yeah, I mean, I want to be – now, think of the impact of that. Chief All Chief. I did was get them together and let them talk and feel as if they were making a difference, right? Uh-huh. That's often the biggest problem. Right. Our, our people are so disconnected from the results they're actually helping create that no one's pointing it out. Why, why is a startup so successful? Because it's small – they're doing things. They see the immediate impact of their actions. They see how they're helping the company succeed. And that's what these wow clubs and just the brainstorming sessions were doing. They were bringing them to the problem. They were brainstorming it together. They were seeing the immediate impact of their actions on the success of the company, and they were being rewarded for it. Excellent. Now, we're just about out of time. In the next 30 seconds, could you... I know time goes by so quickly when we, when we get such uh, excellent content speakers like you on the show, <laughs> seriously. But in, in, in the next 30 seconds, what was the biggest challenge that you face in a in transforming an organization from normal to wow? And how did you overcome that? <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, okay, the biggest 
the biggest obstacle always is this. There were blind spots on both sides. Okay, so leaders from the same organization will come to me and say, we need to engage our people. They don't care. They're not engaging. They're not doing what they should be. They're just barely doing their jobs, and, and we can't get them motivated. We're hoping you can come in and light a fire under them. <laughs> and then I will talk to Yeah, yeah. See, now there's the great thing. Then I talk to the people who are supposed to light the fire under, and I ask them, okay, so what's going on? Well, you know, the very person who spoke to the very leader who had dinner with me the night before telling me that people aren't motivated <laughs> They start saying, well, that person, they won't let me do anything. They shut down every idea or they'll just yes us to death and we don't get to do anything. I'm like, look at this disconnect. Mm. So I have to, yeah, the way we did it with the $2 million, you know, the one who was losing that $2 million client, is for leaders to be open to the fact that, okay, we're not perfect. What do we need to do? And Mm. let me talk to the people anonymously and bring them the feedback. That's how we did it. And then what I help the teams do is say, okay, sometimes your ideas are new or radical. You're going to get a no. Every trailblazer gets a no. Expect it. Embrace it. Mm-hmm. Every no gets you closer to the yes. Absolutely. So don't give up. Absolutely. So that's what I do. Excellent. Now, if the listeners would like to contact your organization and learn more about what you do and possibly utilize your services, how can they do that? Well, my website is called www.thewowplace.com, and my email and phone is all on there. I have videos on there. Um, the training, the, the coaching stuff, the online coaching and the wow club aren't up there quite yet, but within the next month, I should be having them right up there so that they can t- take a look at, at those as well. But if they want to even just talk and brainstorm some ideas with me and see what we might be able to do, I'd love to hear from them. Wowplace, com. Excellent. Well, her latest her latest book is called Turn Your Workplace into a Wow Place and you can get that can you get that on Amazon? Yes, you can. You can get it on Amazon or I have an online store that's accessible from my website as well, but Amazon will do it. Okay, excellent, excellent. Well, this lady is very dynamic and she's got a wealth of information that she could help out organizations with. So, Sandy, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was incredible information that you shared with our listeners. Oh, thank you, Constance, for having me. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.